Let us do it. Let us do it. Let us do it. Let us. Let us do it. Hi. Hi. Welcome back to Coffee Talk, a series where I make coffee, drink coffee, and talk about mental health and self-growth. This is episode two, and the subject for today is three ways you need to treat yourself better. Those three ways are actually also three C's, and I'll get to them as we go through. But first, coffee. I'm selling the very same coffee as last time. I swear one day I'm gonna have a sponsor or something, and then I'll be like, oh, I'm on this coffee. I'm using this thing from this company. But we're, we're not there yet. For now, it's just still the coffee I bought at the store nearby that I like. That being said, it has been watery, and that's been bugging me a little. I think it's because this one is actually a medium roast instead of a dark roast. As you can see, I didn't keep the bag, so I can't remember what it was. But medium roast is a bit harder to properly extract than a dark roast. We're gonna go for a full 18 today. 17.99, that's good enough. Awesome. So the three C's for the three ways you need to treat yourself better. First one, hear me out. You've never seen that one come in. Compassion. You got to show yourself compassion. Now, how do I dare tell you things that you probably know about? How do I dare tell you something that everyone's fucking told you about already? Everyone's told you, be compassionate to yourself. You got you to gotta show yourself compassion. Well, the thing is, I think I have a different approach to bringing it up. And that's just, for a lot of my life, I was my worst enemy. For a lot of my life, I was the person that hated me the most. And then I realized I'm supposed to be the person that loves myself the most, not the worst enemy that I can have. And that's where compassion comes in. You see, the thing is, it's it's such a thin line between the two. Talking shit about yourself, attacking yourself, doing all the things that go against you because you have all the reasons to hate yourself or want yourself to have a hard time. <laughs> See, right now, I'm actually talking shit about myself in my head. Dude, what the fuck are you doing? And then I'm like, wait, who cares? Show yourself compassion. Worst thing that can happen, no one watches this. And you're watching this, so that's already not the worst thing. So I don't have to be so hard on myself about having the perfect words. See, that's one of those moments. I tend to be my worst enemy, just like maybe you tend to be. And the reason we have to show ourselves compassion is exactly that. Because no one else will ever be as good an enemy as you to yourself. And no one else will ever be as good a support as you to yourself. So it comes down to choosing your team. Do you want to be on your own team or do you want to be on the team that kicks your own ass in the bad way? I'm curious to see how that extraction comes out. Now, one of the ways to understand showing yourself compassion, and it's been said to you already, is treat yourself like you would your best friend. Your best friend will do things, and ooh, that's a great extraction. Your best friend will do things and you'll accept it. You'll easily forgive. You'll easily be more open-minded and looking for solutions already. You'll do that for your best friend. You'll do that for your family. You'll do that for your partner. You'll do that for strangers on the street. You treat strangers on the street better than you're willing to treat yourself. And God knows they're not all great, those strangers on the street. And somehow you're still willing to show them a bit more compassion than you're willing to show yourself. You gotta treat yourself like you would your best friend. You gotta actually see what you're doing. Oh my God, how did it end up? It is more watery than the one before it. It smells all right. Okay. You have to actually see you as your own best friend. You have to come to that understanding. You're the only person that can support you always and forever. Everybody else that supports you isn't around you forever. But you're around you until the very last moment. You're guaranteed to have that. So you have to understand, like, you have to be your best friend. You have to be your best support system. Showing yourself compassion is the first step. It's a great way to treat yourself better. It's going, hey, you're having a really rough day. All right, let's just deal with that then. Let's just have the rough day. Let's either face it or allow it or question it. Think about it, go through it, do the whole process that you need to do, but ignoring it is not the way to go. Torturing yourself about it is not the way to go. Being mean to yourself about it, judgmental, or purposely putting things in your own way, making sure that your day is even more hell than it already is. That's not compassion. That's not helping yourself. So instead it's understanding, hey, I'm having one of those days. I can't be perfect. Perfection doesn't exist, actually. If your best friend came to you and said, hey, I can't reach this. I'm supposed to be perfect. You would say to them, perfection is not possible. You can't be perfect. Perfection's not an option. So don't beat yourself up about not being perfect. You would say that to your best friend. What comes down to the same for you? Don't expect perfection from yourself. Don't put that much pressure on yourself because that's not being compassionate towards yourself. You're gonna have a healthy amount of pressure, fine. But expecting perfection from yourself, not being compassionate towards yourself. So the very first step to treating yourself better is just showing yourself compassion. Things aren't going your way, okay, why? And then good, let's face that, let's deal with that. What's the healthiest way that we can deal with this together? I say we and together, but I'm talking about you and yourself, right? Not multiple personalities, just you and a touch of cold water, of course. Okay. 
It's definitely too hot. So I got to chill, but it's actually not that bad. I didn't mess it up so bad. So what I was saying is I don't mean multiple personalities. I just mean you and yourself or hear me out. There is a team of two people, two different people, you and your inner child. See, the same way you could look at your inner child or you can look at your younger version and think, I hear you already, I hear your thoughts. Aren't you thinking already like, oh shit, man, all those negative thoughts, oh, I let you down. Oh, I wish you hadn't gone through this. Oh, I wish I could have saved you from that, right? First thing, you couldn't, you didn't, and that's because you couldn't. Life went the way it did because that's how it was gonna go. With the knowledge that you had every single step of the way, that's how life went. So don't feel like that about your inner child. And actually it's kind of mean to say that to your inner child. Because if you're saying, fuck, I wish I could have saved you, that doesn't change anything. Here's one thing you could say, knowing that you're here right now. Hey, I know this is gonna suck, but you get through it. You're still here, you're still fighting. That's something you could say to your inner child. So the team that is there for your success is you, yourself, and your inner child. So you gotta show everyone on that team compassion. It's much easier too to think about your inner child than show it compassion. This is fully being 100% honest. For a whole period of time, not so long ago, like within the past year, I had to hug myself to sleep. I was doing so bad that I had to physically hug myself and think about hugging my younger self in order to fall asleep. But you know what, it worked, it worked. I was able to go through these really intense emotions I was having and come to a sense of peace. And all I was thinking was, I got you. I got you, little guy, I got you. I know it sucks, I know it's hard, but I got you. That's an example of showing yourself compassion. Giving yourself a fucking hug. Literally, I don't care that it could look stupid. Giving yourself a hug like this, closing your eyes, sway if you need, is one of the ways. But it won't start until you understand that you have to be your own support team. You have to be the best support system you can ever have because it's no one else out there. If you've seen the last video, you can only ever show up for people as much as you've shown up for yourself. And people can only ever show up for you as much as you show up for yourself. So if you're not your best support system, nobody else can be. By the way, these like cool ass tools I have, 3D printed them myself. Gave in not so long ago and we have a 3D printer and definitely some of the coffee tools I wanted printed and any other random thing that I feel like I need. Okay, parentheses, done. Second point or second C, care, self care. This one is simple and yet subtle. It's, it's the most obvious and also the most nuanced. The easiest obvious part of it is you gotta take care of yourself. You gotta eat well, you gotta do physical activities if you can do physical activities. You gotta do something physical, even if it's just a walk, whatever it is. You also have to get yourself outside, even if it's rainy. You know what, if it's rainy or snowy or sunny, sunny is the best situation, but I'm just saying, even if it's rainy or snowy, dress up as fucking warm as you can and go outside, do it. Dress up so you can't even fathom the idea of being cold or uncomfortable and then go outside. Do physical activities, eat well, clean up. I say that and I'm the worst at cleaning up, but that's the thing. If I don't clean up, I feel like shit. So I will eventually clean up knowing that's the reason I feel like shit. One of my tricks for self-care, get dressed. Get dressed every single day, every single morning. Fully put on an outfit, even if you're not leaving home, get dressed. Put on a real outfit, not sweatpants. The clothes you wear influence the energy you have. If I'm wearing sweatpants, I have a shit day. I know that. I do have sweatpants. And when I put them on, I just know today's gonna be a lazy day. I ain't doing shit. I'm not gonna be doing great, but I'm just gonna laze out. Now that's the obvious part of self-care. The less obvious part of self-care is being able to call when you need rest. I'm not just saying like, hey, get some sleep at night, which definitely get some sleep at night, but it's actually being able to say, shit, I'm having it so bad right now, I need to just do nothing. Or I need to do this, I need to do that. It's being able to look within and go, okay, if I take away the pressure that I'm putting on myself about this thing, do I actually need to sit down? Do I actually need to drink water? Do I actually need to go for a walk? Or do I need to get into it? Do I need to double down on the intensity? Is that what I need for my own self-care, for my own betterment? That's this more subtle part because you actually have to look within and with the first point, you have to show yourself compassion. So it's easy sometimes to know what the self-care is. It is much harder to have the compassion to allow it to happen. A lot of people know they're supposed to eat better, but do they choose to? Do they allow that? I struggled with an eating disorder growing up and still to this day, some of it will show up every now and then. And to me, that was actually a form of self-harm. That was my approach to eating disorder. If I was hurting, it made more sense. My life felt so intense without a real proof of pain that not eating, giving me actual pain, finally explained some of the feelings I was feeling. So in a self-care way, even now, when some thoughts kind of show up every now and then, or just when I look back at my day and I realize, hey, I didn't eat today. No wonder I feel like shit. I didn't have my coffee yet and it's 3 p.m. No wonder I feel like shit or water or whatever. But just having this acknowledgement of, hey, I did this thing that's not usually good by me. I did this thing that's not usually good for me, that I know tends to go against me. And then having a compassion to go, hey, let's do it. Let's do that thing. Instead of rushing through whatever problem you're supposed to come back from, 
instead of rushing through. You gotta allow yourself the time to deal with something. And hear me out, okay? This one's gonna be a fucking shock. Allowing yourself the time to deal with the thing will allow you to get past the thing faster than trying to rush through the process. <laughs> God damn. Okay, I'm being funny, but I, I mean that though. Actually, allowing yourself the time, thinking, hey, how much time do I think I need for this? Okay, let's give it time. And you know what? If I get to the end of that and I still need more time, then I'll allow more time. And then eventually you get to the end of the end of the end of the end and you're like, okay, I've given myself plenty of fucking time. No more time, no more time, time to act, time to get up, time to move, time to do the thing. That's also self-care. It's constantly looking and then going, what's the thing I need right now for my actual self-betterment? And then having the compassion to allow it, to do it, to go for it. And now we're down to our third point. Courage, that's our third C. Having the courage to do everything. Having the courage to go through the difficult things, to just go through life. Having the courage to actually take risks, good risks, hopefully not bad risks, but take risks. Having the courage to be on your own team. Having the courage to say, yes, I do want the best for me, actually, and I will go for it. I'll take care of myself, I'll have compassion, and I'll go for it. That all takes courage. We have an unwritten rule in acting that says the character that loses hope is a character that dies. If a character has no hope, they're dead. Anytime I read a script, if, if I choose, if I choose that the character has no hope, it's dead. That character is dead. What does it have to look forward to? Nothing. It has no hope. It doesn't think it'll get through this. You can look back at your favorite movies, favorite TV shows, when the character is completely lost. They have nothing. Their whole world crashed down. They still have that one thing. They still have hope that it doesn't. That's the only reason that makes them actually bounce back and then go on to become the hero of the movie or the show. That's real in real life too. If you have no hope, you're pretty much ending up with the same destiny as that character. So you gotta have the courage to have hope because fuck, is it so scary to have hope? Yeah, but if I have hope, there's this chance I end up disappointed. There's a chance it doesn't happen. There's a chance I fail. Yeah, but not having the courage to do that, you'd still get exactly that answer. You don't have the courage to do this, you end up disappointed. You don't have the courage to do this, you fail. You don't have the courage to do this, you hurt. You didn't get the thing you wanted. So the third C for how to treat yourself better is courage. Is show courage towards yourself. Everything that scares you, face it. Everything that you're kind of afraid of, do it. Do it scared. That's one of my favorite random quotes from the internet. But what if I'm scared? Then do it scared. I can't even explain to you how much that feels like the, the biggest movie moment to me, the biggest hug. It's like, we're so scared all the time. We have so much fear about everything because we want everything to be the best. Because turns out we do have hope. We hope for everything to be the best. So we want everything to be the best. We're worried. But having the courage to do it scared, to be scared and say, I'm not gonna wait until I'm not scared to do it. I'm gonna do it and the fear's gonna go away because I'll be doing it. And when I do something, I'm not afraid, I'm doing it, I'm in it. So the third way to treat yourself better is courage. Courage. Have the courage. Say, hey, you know what? I have the courage to do this. I have the courage to acknowledge what is the care that I need. Show it to myself and do it. I have the courage to show myself the compassion. Even though everyone in my life tried to convince me that I didn't deserve compassion. Everyone in my life showed me no compassion. Showed me the opposite of that. Made me feel like I wasn't worth being compassionate towards. I didn't deserve compassion. Having the courage to say, I do deserve compassion. I'll give myself compassion. I will go against everybody else's example and I'll show myself compassion. I'll take good care of myself. I'll be compassionate towards myself. I'll excuse my mistakes. I'll accept them. I'll go with them. I will learn from them. I'll get back up. I'll do the thing again that is taking care of me. Whatever it is I need to do, I'll do it. And then I'll bounce back because the least I can do is have courage to stick with the hope that I can be okay. So all three of those together. Show yourself self-compassion. Show yourself self-care. And have the courage to go through all of it and not give up, not be your worst enemy. Have the courage to be your best friend. Have the courage to be your biggest support system. Because God, why is that so scary? It's okay, do it scared. That was episode two of Coffee Talk. I got through more of my coffee this time, so that's good. <laughs> Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. It helps me know that you liked it. it. Helps YouTube know that you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you want more, if you're looking forward to future episodes. And leave a comment, actually. Whether it's about something I said in this video and you relate, or an extra point you think I missed, even. Or if you have a question, a future segment of the Coffee Talk episodes is going to be me answering questions about that subject. So all the questions that end up being asked in the comments, if I pick that subject for the video, then I'll go back and answer them as a part of the video. I don't currently have that, because I only have one video out. But as it goes and as I stack up more questions, then I'll be able to do that. So feel free, let me know your questions or just a subject you want me to talk about. Something that you want me to give you tips on. Am I professional? No. All I am is a, a, an amateur human. That's what I am. I don't have training. I just have trauma and a selfish desire to share my experience. I'm not 
trying to pretend that's anything else. I just like sharing the stuff I go through and if something helps anyone else, then I'm happy. That's it for this one. If you feel like hearing me talk more about some mental health stuff, then you can go ahead and check out this one right there. And I will say goodbye for this video as I finish the rest of this coffee. Have yourself a great day. Thanks a bunch for watching. I appreciate you. Go and treat yourself real nice, okay? All right, I'll see you in the next one.